Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. And uh, we're doing a study today, and it's called How to Be Strong, How to Be a Strong Church. So I hope this is going to be a blessing to you. And uh, so let's come before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done for us. We come in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that you be glorified today. We ask, Father, in his name that you be pleased now to bless by the power of your Holy Spirit and to seal this message to all our hearts that we would all be brought into your presence and blessed and encouraged through your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Okay, so if you'd like to turn to... If you'd like to turn to uh, Philippians chapter 2, I'm going to be reading uh, for the chapter Holman's translation, but I'll be using uh, the King James throughout the whole study. I prefer the King James, uh, but I understand that some people would prefer uh, something that they could understand in translation. So Philippians uh, chapter 2. So I'm going to cut off every uh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, so this is part one. Is there any encouragement for belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in his spirit? Are your hearts tender and sympathetic? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one heart and purpose. Don't be selfish don't live to make a good impression on others be humble thinking of others as better than yourselves don't think only about your own affairs but be interested in others too that they are and what they are doing your attitude should be the same that Christ Jesus had though he was God he did not demand to cling the rights as God he made himself nothing he took the humble position of a slave appeared in human form and in human form he obediently humbled himself even further by dying a criminal's death on a cross because of this God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name that is above every other name Sorry, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Dear friends, you were always so careful to follow my instructions when I was with you. Now that I am away, you must be even more careful to put into action God's saving work in your lives, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey Him, the power to do what pleases Him. In everything you do, stay away from the complaining and arguing, so that no one can speak a word of blame against you. You are to live clean, innocent lives as children of God, in a dark world full of crooked and perverse people. Let your lives shine brightly before them, hold tightly to the word of life, so that when Christ returns, I, I will be proud that I did not lose the rest, and that my work was not useless. But even if my life is to be poured out like a drink offering to complete the sacrifice of your faithful service, that is, if I am to die for you, I will rejoice, and I want to share my joy with all of you. And you should be happy about this, and rejoice with me. If the Lord Jesus is willing, I hope to send Timothy to you soon. Then when he comes back, he can cheer me up by telling me how you are getting along. I have no one else like Timothy who genuinely cares about your welfare. All the others care only for themselves and are, and are not for what matters to Jesus Christ. 
you know how Timothy has proved himself like a son with his father he has helped me in preaching the good news and I hope to send him to you just as soon as I find out what is going to happen to me here and I have con confidence from the Lord that I myself will come to see you soon meanwhile I thought I should send Epaphroditus back to you he is a true brother a worker and a courageous soldier and he is a messenger to help me in my need I am sending him home again where he has been longing to see you he was very distressed that you heard he was ill and he surely was ill in fact he almost died but God had mercy on him and also on me so that I would not have such unbearable sorrow so I am the more anxious to send him back to you for I know you will be glad to see him and that will lighten all my cares welcome him with Christian love and with the greatest joy be sure to honor people like him for he risked his life for the work of Christ and he was at the point of death while trying to do for me the things you couldn't do because you were far away so that's uh, Philippians chapter 2 that's the Holman translation sorry about this I've got a, some water here stopped up with water ok so how to be strong, a strong church the work of God um, is easily affected I think by disunity if there's disunity in the work then we're not going to be a strong church and I think that's the message that I want to bring to you today in this passage of scripture that we're going to look at which is Philippians chapter 4 verse 2 it says I plead with uh, Odia and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord and Paul is saying look there's a problem in your church you're not getting on those who aren't getting on you need to be united one writer says the one danger which threatens the Philippian church was the danger of disunity there's a sense in which that is the danger of every healthy church William Barclay now I don't agree with everything William Barclay wrote he was a liberal um, but he wrote some good commentaries that explain the, the the New Testament from Greek in a very simple way um, but he was a liberal and I don't agree with liberal theology I'm an evangelical but let's just read that again the one danger which threatens the Philippian church was the danger of disunity there is a sense in which that is the danger of every healthy church you know in a local church the Holy Spirit takes special note of whether there's love in that church he takes spe his special notice of whether there's unity in that church and if there's no unity in the church it grieves the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will not work in that church and so often the devil will try to sow disunity in the body of Christ one writer says William Barclay again says Paul is pleading with the Philippians to live in unity and in harmony to lay aside the disharmonies and their discords and to shed their personal ambitions and their pride and their desire for preeminence and prestige and to have in their hearts that humble selfless desire to serve which was the very essence of life of Christ so often in the local church uh, there can be a new pastor who comes along and the existing elders and leadership feel 
jealousy because they're no longer in control of the church very often people can be running a ministry in a church and they've been doing it for a long time and new people come with new gifts new talents and the people who were there in the church for a long time feel threatened and they can become jealous when the new people get attention sometimes you can get in a church some individual who has a very distorted doctrine and then they try to bring this doctrine within the church and it causes disunity sometimes you can have a group of people within a church or coming into church that have a different theological agenda and then push that agenda to the point where it causes severe division unity in a local church is to be guarded it is a precious oil it is precious to the Lord and every single person within a local church has to be aware that the devil will try to sow disunity within your church and it's very serious so number one remember the importance of unity remember the importance of unity and un uh, disunity within a church makes a church unstable so if you if you have young Christians coming into a church where that ch 